Uh, so yeah, just to briefly introduce the, the Metadata Extractor Interoperability for Material Science and Chemistry Working Group. We do need a better acronym from that. So that's the first point of feedback from anyone, please. Um, to quickly show you uh, sort of straight away where you can find what, what we're doing, we're also on GitHub under the Mater Alliance banner. Uh, I think we have four repositories. This, this main one, Metadata underscore uh, Extractors, is where we kind of have general discussions and arrange logistics. Uh, so, you know, you can pop in here and you can see it's fairly, fairly active. Um, and then we have these three other sort of more technical repositories where we're actually sort of developing some of the ideas into sort of concrete uh, sort of frameworks and things. So without further ado, um, yeah, my, my name is Matthew Evans. I'm a, a postdoc at UC Levan, joint with a company in Belgium called Matt Genix. And I'm one of the co-leads of this group. So, so Peter Krauss at TU Berlin is, is the second co-lead and David, who you all know now, I'm sure. Uh, and, and the working group itself is, is about 30 or so people from many different projects, many different uh, consortia in research data management generally, also in materials specifically, and also software engineering uh, for scientific uh, for science. And yeah, as David said, this was kind of assembled from, from conversations uh, mostly last year at sort of RDA meetings and Madises and MADA meetings. So yeah, it's great to actually sort of be able to get stuck in on, on ideas that we discuss at, at meetings like this. So to quickly motivate what we're doing, I mean, I think we've already heard sort of several aspects of, of, um, of what I'm going to discuss, but we, we wanted to sort of find the, the, the common denominator between lots of um, experimental work in particular, where the analysis and the sort of digitization becomes a real sort of sticking point. And we've kind of termed this as a scientific ETL, so extract, transform, load, which is this kind of generic term for uh, dealing with data that's potentially in files or on a disk or coming in as a stream, uh, transforming that into something useful. So something like uh, an object in your particular programming language or in a, in a file that can be read uh, by more generic tools like, a let's say, HDF5. And then we want to be able to load that into some sort of queryable store like a database or, or maybe archive it, uh, archive it somewhere. And three sort of user stories that, that, that motivate some issues are maybe around that process at the moment. So if you're just a sort of a, a bench scientist and you're, uh, you know, let's say you've characterized a new material and you, you want to publish the raw data on that. Uh, we've heard already, you know, you, you can put this in a lot of fantastic archives, um, but it's not always clear what format to put this in. It's not clear how it's going to be reused in the future or how you can promote its reuse in the future. Um, and certainly it, it's also very hard to describe what you've actually, what you're actually providing them, right? Um, so it requires a lot of work on the actual archive side. We've seen how sort of Nomad has hundreds of different passes. It runs every file through and tries to figure things out. Uh, but it'd be great if you could also provide this kind of sidecar of metadata to say, oh, well, this is an XRD in this file. It was related to this sample, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so, you know, that's one aspect we want to try and tackle with this working group. Uh, second aspect would be for sort of software developers who maybe aren't domain experts, who, you know, are, are working on behalf of some scientists, say, and they've turn up or they, they create a new technique or they, they start using a new instrument in the lab and suddenly supporting a new file type and, and um, without that domain expertise becomes becomes quite difficult. Uh, you have to sort of find a library that, that deals with it, write something yourself or you know maybe it has these sort of complex dependencies you have to deal with. And also we want to sort of foster these, these communities and ecosystems around uh, these parser codes and generally sort of improve the quality or give them guidelines for a uh, you know, how they can uh, produce schemas alongside their, their parsing tools uh, so that when the data does get ingested and, and does get transformed into some other way, uh, you can sort of backtrack and, and see what definitions that, uh, or assumptions were, were built into the parser itself. So I'll try and sort of speed through maybe the, the rest of this a little bit because I, I realize I am already uh, shooting through the time. Um, so, you know, three, three quick summary points of the goals of this group would be to enable infrastructure archives or ELN developers to parse these files more robustly. Uh, to improve the quality and discoverability of passes we already have, and to then be able to index over sort of re domain relevant metadata that's sort of locked away in these raw files at the moment. And to do that, we've got this sort of three-pronged approach. We want to come up with a, a lightweight metadata schema for the extractors themselves. So describing the inputs and outputs of a, of a piece of software essentially, um, and scoped at the moment to a piece of software that will read a, a raw data file. Uh, we then want to have a sort of a common API specification of how we actually execute that code. So this is kind of a stretch goal, as you might call it, 
um, but would allow then sort of machine actionable use of these of these parsers um, without needing a DLN developer, say, to enable that file type on a particular system. And that involves containerization, as, as I mentioned in the, uh, the doc. And the third, the, a more sort of achievable goal is to have a sort of searchable registry of extractors and file types that couple the two and allow people to you know, find which, which software projects have already dealt with the file type they're interested in, uh, and also the reverse of, of things that are available in, in existing frameworks. So that's a, a big picture um, of how these things link together. Uh, I think I'll whiz through the next uh, few slides, but of course, if there is a recording, you can, you can pause and have a look in more detail. Um, so to very briefly summarize our sort of progress so far, we have released a sort of a version 0.1 of the schemas for file types and extractors. Um, we've written these things in link ML. So if, if you know what that is, um, it, the idea is that it can be then used in lots of other programming languages and frameworks. So it's quite agnostic to that. Uh, and the idea is that this is an incremental, incrementally adoptable approach where uh, just because your, your parser doesn't already provide a schema, it doesn't sort of rule you out of, of being in the registry. Uh, we just have the sort of metadata fields for, for describing what your schema, uh, your parser does. Uh, the, the, well, our, next, our next aims are also to link to other standards. So if anyone has any sort of particular uh, experience and other standards in this area, then please, please chat to us. Uh, the common API specification, as I say, is, is more of a stretch goal. Um, we're still very much at the scoping stage, but you know, the idea would be that we can have some sort of overarching framework that allows you to call passes in parallel and does, does sort of awkward things like that um, and have a sort of a well-defined entry point to these passes that you know, you, if you give it a, a, a file on a disk, you know you're going to get back some passing pass version of that file and its schema in a, in a well-defined way. And unfortunately, some animations are being a bit slow here. Packaging for external use. So whether we can containerize these things at that point would be would be great. And the, the, the sort of open questions on the right here. So this is the thing I just added based on the last uh, last few sessions, is that this is quite a generic thing, right? We we could you can view operating of on data as you know just the, the base of computation. Like we we, we want to scope this into something we can actually achieve, but really this could fit in nicely with uh, some of the stuff we've heard about on containerizing ML workflows and uh, sort of how you actually map out schemas and things for the outputs of ML models and, and, and the inputs that they need. Uh, finally, the, the registry of passes. So this already exists, this is already posted. I'm gonna click on it now and hopefully it's, it's alive. It is alive. And just to show you, if I visit the file types endpoints, we currently have three file types, um, biologic MPR files, biologic MPT files and quantum design at data files. Uh, from I think squid uh, measurements. Um, so really we want to populate these these registries as much as we can. Uh, so if you have file types you, you work with often and you have passes for them, please consider uh, making a pull request. And I'll give you some more details about how to do that in a second. Uh, we also have our first sort of actual extractor entry, which is a, a code from Peter Krauss, one of the co-leads, this uh, Yaduk uh, thing. And you can see some of the metadata that you can provide uh, for your, your own code. And hopefully as, as this grows, it uh, can become a useful portal for discoverability. Okay, I'm having the feeling I've definitely spoken for too long and I'm probably being let off because uh, we were a little bit early. So I, I'll just finish with, you know, if you're interested, uh, contact probably David or myself or, or, or Peter through, through any sort of sensible means and we'll add you to the mailing list. And I would say that, you know, we are interested in getting people who are developing extractor libraries themselves, who are dealing with awkward file types as part of their research and maybe want help extracting stuff. Obviously, vendors would be great if we could get instrument manufacturers to sort of provide their own open source things here. That would be fantastic. Uh, schema and semantic experts as well. So, you know, we, we have chosen a way of uh, representing our schemas at the moment, but that is, that is not set in stone. And then users. So if we, you know, if you, if this sounds like something you'd be interested in using, whether you're, a, you know, an archive or infrastructure provider, or just a scientist who has to deal with lots of awkward file types, then uh, you should maybe come to one of the meetings. So our next one is going to be on the twenty first of March at three p.m. UTC. I will not convert that to whatever time zone everyone else is in right now. I'm afraid, um, but it's all announced on on GitHub as well. And we also have these fortnightly office hours where Peter and I tend to just be in a room together online. So if you want to just jump into one of those and then have an informal chat, you are more than welcome. 
And there's a channel on the Slack, the Marder Slack, which I think has been advertised already. So yeah, hopefully if that excited you, then uh, get in touch.